So what is Parkinson's disease? So the classic be tremor, usually in the hands, usually asymmetric, usually at rest. Slowness of movement takes longer to getting dressed, putting on makeup, stiffness or rigidity, and difficulty walking. From uh, my colleague, Dr. Michael Oaken and his colleagues uh, from JAMA Neurology, highlighting the, um, the progression of Parkinson's disease uh, over time. Most of the, much of the disease is diagnosed as people get older, just like with lung cancer, by the way. And people live 15, 20, 30 years uh, with the disease. So what's the history of Parkinson's disease? Well, it was first described uh, 200 years ago. In fact, Dr. James Parkinson, who first described it, his birthday is in 10 days. And today's the first day of Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. So a well-timed uh, invitation. So thank you very much again for the invitation to be with you. So Dr. Parkinson was 62 years old, was a British physician, been practicing medicine for about 30 years when he described in, in a uh, pamphlet called an essay on the shaking palsy, he didn't call it Parkinson's disease. He described something that he said was a new or novel condition, a condition that had not been described in the medical literature. So to him, uh, when he's describing it, the ma most of the major description of the disease, he says, I'm describing something new. 50 years later, uh, the father of modern uh, neurology, Dr. Jean-Martin Charcot, uh, named the disease after him, calling it La Malade de Parkinson or Parkinson's uh, disease. William Gowers in the uh, late 1800s uh, wrote a case series of individuals with Parkinson's disease, highlighting that only 15% of the patients he saw had a family history of the disease, giving us a really good clue that Parkinson's disease is not dictated by genetic, not dictated by genetic factors, but largely by environmental ones. And in the 1950s, we found that individuals with Parkinson's disease, that their brains had lower amounts of a chemical called dopamine, which led to the development of the most effective medication for Parkinson's disease called levodopa. So Parkinson's disease is a very treatable condition and levodopa uh, is the most effective medication developed over 50 years ago. In uh, 1983, a really smart neurologist who's still, still with us, Dr. Bill Langston, uh, who's now at Stanford University, was just practicing medicine at Santa Clara Valley uh, Hospital when uh, a person came into the emergency room who had developed what appeared to be Parkinson's disease, but had developed it not over years, but over a few days. And this, had, this led to the first identification of an environmental cause uh, for Parkinson's disease, as this individual and others like him were using a sheet a street form of heroin that had been contaminated with a chemical that damages uh, the dopamine producing nerve cells in the brains of individuals with Parkinson's disease. In 1997, the first genetic cause for Parkinson's disease was identified, very rare, accounting for less than that particular mutation, less than one out of every 10,000 people with Parkinson's disease. And there are some genetic risk factors that have been identified. They are important. And many of these uh, genetic risk factors and gen genetic mutations have known interactions with environmental factors that I'll be describing to you. In 2000, the biggest uh, change in Parkinson's disease in my lifetime was uh, Mike, Michael J. Fox sharing his uh, disease and disability with the broader community and forming the Michael J. Fox Foundation, which over 20 years has raised over a billion dollars for Parkinson's disease research. In 2003, a German pathologist, Dr. Heiko Brock, postulated a very new hypothesis. He said that perhaps Parkinson's disease does not begin in the brain, that Parkinson's disease is not fundamentally a brain disease, that Parkinson's disease begins outside of the brain, perhaps in the gut or perhaps in the nose. And I'm going to present to you evidence suggesting that that indeed might be the case. And 2017, exactly 200 years after Dr. Parkinson described a condition that had not been classified in the medical literature, the Global Burden of Disease study concludes that Parkinson's disease is the fastest growing brain disease in the entire world. So in the span of 200 years, we go from something that's likely rare, if not very rare, to something common, if not very common. How could that happen? Uh, so this is uh, the essay uh, by Dr. James Parkinson. I wrote um, describing six individuals, three of whom he just saw walking the streets of London. Any of you who watched The Crown can see that the picture of the streets of London was not one of clean of cleanliness. Uh, this, this is a picture of the London, little to do with weather and everything to do with air pollution. And it was so air pollution was so bad you couldn't even see across the street. And you can see the individuals that depicted the family depicted 
their mouths, much like people in Beijing uh, might be doing uh, today to prevent themselves from the toxic. And si since this time, uh, numerous products and byproducts of the Industrial Revolution, including uh, air pollution, certain pesticides, and industrial chemicals have all been linked uh, to Parkinson's disease. Now the world's... Uh, oops, now the world's fastest growing brain disease. According to the Global Burden of Disease Study, the number of people with Parkinson's disease worldwide has more than doubled in this, just the span of 25 years, growing faster than can be accounted by aging alone. And absent change, the number of people with Parkinson's disease will more than double in the coming generation. Just to give you a flavor of this, there are about 1.2 million Americans who are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease today. Another 200 will get that diagnosis in a clinic uh, today. And another 100, uh, unfortunately, die from the disease, which is now the 14th leading cause of death uh, in the United States. And if you look at uh, Parkinson's disease, it's growing in virtually every part of the world. The areas that are most industrialized, like the United States and Canada, have the areas of the world that are least industrialized, like Sub-Saharan Africa, have the lowest rates of the disease. And areas of the world industrialization like China and India have the fastest increasing rates of the disease. Mm -hmm.